Here we have an equilateral triangle ABC. And inside of this triangle, we get a point P that satisfies this condition. BP squared equals AP squared plus CP squared. And we ask to find this angle APC. Before we're going to go and answer that question, let's do a little bit of investigation. Let's think where this point P could be. One thing we can see that if P coincides with A, we're going to satisfy this equality. If this P coincides with C, we're also going to satisfy this equality. Now, let's drop an altitude BD in our triangle. And now what I'm going to claim is the point P is somewhere on this green line. Notice when point P is on this green line and it approaches point B, BP is going to be tiny. But AP and CP are rather large. And therefore, instead of the quality like this, we're going to get inequality like this. Notice when P is actually going to move to point D, in this case, it's actually rather easy to show that BP squared is going to be greater than AP squared plus CP. I'm going to leave it as an exercise to you because it's not really important for solving this problem. But what it means here that when P is on this green line and it's very close to B, in this case, we have inequality like this, less than. But when we move on this green line towards D, at some point, we're going to have a flipped inequality. And that means, assuming that everything changes continuously, there is no jumps, at some point on this line, BP square should be equal to AP square plus CP square. But also think about it that this vertical line is not the only way I can go from point B to point D. I can choose a path like this or a path like this. So and if I choose path like this, again, notice that at the beginning of this path, this is a continuous path. We expect everything to go continuously. Don't jump. Over here, we have an equality less than. Now I go along this path. When I get close to D, I'm going to have an equality like this. So it means that somewhere on my path, I should have a point where BP squared equals to AP squared plus CP squared. That makes me think that there should be points right here and right here. So it looks like we have infinite number of points that will satisfy this equality. So, and that makes me think that in addition to finding the same, it would be interesting to find actually all the possible location for point P that satisfy this condition. The natural way to do it is to use method of coordinates. We're going to introduce a coordinate system x, y, x is horizontal axis, goes through side AC. Point A is going to be the origin of coordinate system and y is going to go up. Now, another assumption we're going to make is the side of this equilateral triangle equals to 1. We don't have to make this assumption. We can say it's some letter A, B, C, whatever you want to use. But really, it doesn't matter for this problem. The result is going to be the same. If you make those assumptions, now coordinates of points A, B, and C are going to be this. So obviously, C has coordinate 1, 0 because the length of AC is 1. Now, coordinate of B, it's easy to see that this is what you're going to get if you know something about equilateral triangles. If you want to refresh your memory about equilateral triangles, I have a link to another video here. So what it really means that uh, horizontal position of point B, exactly in the middle between points and AC, and the vertical coordinate means that the length of the altitude BD is square root of 3 over 2. In general, when you have an equilateral triangle with the side A, the altitude BD will be square root of 3 over 2 times that A. The next thing we want to do, we want to get this equation. So we want to find BP square, AP square, and CP square. Since we know coordinates of all these points, and also we're going to say that coordinate of point P is XPYP. 
uh, we can quickly find BP square, AP square, and CP square. For example, BP square will be horizontal coordinate of point B minus horizontal coordinate of point P squared plus vertical coordinate of point B minus vertical coordinate of point P squared. So now we just want to equate this line to sum of these two, and this is what we're going to get. Now here what I did, I also open up all these parentheses. So what you have on the left is actually BP squared. It's this thing. Only what you have on the right is these two terms is AP squared. The rest of it, these four terms, is CP squared. Now if you combine all the like terms, we get a much simpler equation like this. And now the question is, what is this? And to answer this question, first let's do what is called completing the square. To complete the square, we're going to use this formula. The first square is going to have terms with xp, and the second square is going to have terms with yp. So xp square will be our a square, minus xp will be 2ab, and what we need to figure out, what b square should be here. And it turned out that b square should be 1 fourth. And we're going to add this 1 fourth here, but so we don't change anything, we have to subtract this 1 fourth as well. When you look at the next two terms, and when you think how you can complete the square, you find yp square should be a square, square root of 3, yp should be 2ab, and when you think about it, b square should be 3 fourth. And again, once we add a 3 fourth, we should subtract this 3 fourth. Once you do this, you'll find out the first three terms give us yp minus half squared. These three terms give us yp plus square root of 3 over 2 squared. And obviously we had minus quarter and minus three quarters that stay here. Now we're going to move them to the other side of this equation, and that's what we're going to get. Now what we got here is actually equation of a circle. In general, equation of a circle looks like this, where a, b, and r square are constants. So in this equation, uh, a and b represent a coordinate of the center of a circle, and r represent the radius of a circle. In our case, the center will be 1 half minus square root of 3 over 2, and radius will be 1. So let's call the center of the circle point O, and in this case we find that point O should be right here. And also you find an interesting fact that really this triangle AOC is an equilateral triangle, and in the fact it's really a mirror image of triangle ABC, if you flip this triangle over the horizontal axis x. Notice that point A, P, and C lay on the circle, and because of that the angle A, P, C is what's called inscribed angle. I have links to some other videos where I discuss inscribed angles and their properties in much more details. Here what I want to say that inscribed angle is related to its central angle. So if I have an angle that also goes through point A and C and also through the center of a circle, point O, and that's angle AOC, that angle is called central angle. And the measure of the central angle is twice as much as the measure of the inscribed angle. Now the only thing here is we have to be very, very careful. Because when we talk about angles A or C, we could mean two things. We can mean this small angle, which is 60 degrees because it's a collateral triangle, or we can mean this big angle here. And it turned out when we talk about this particular inscribed angle, the corresponding to it central angle is that big green angle here. Now we can easily calculate the measure of this big green angle. That's 360 minus this 60, so it's going to be 300 degrees. And the red angle we're interested in is half of it, 
So it's 150 degrees, and that is the final answer.